What's going on, a push peeps? We are back after a somewhat long hiatus. I'm doing a brand new series of videos. This will cover every learning objective in the exam in May, all of which is also in the curriculum. So if it's in these videos, it's in the curriculum. If it's in the curriculum, there's a great chance it'll be on your test. So the very first one we're gonna to do today is unit one learning objective A, topic 1.1. The objective is explain the context for European encounters in the Americas from 1491 to 1607. That's what you'll be able to do by the end of this video. And every PowerPoint, every video, will also have an assessment that matches up to the objective. So let's get started. So your test tip, each video will also have an important test tip for you, contextualization. That's what this test tip is about. It is a significant skill you must understand to succeed in a push. Understanding the big picture of this time period is important for contextualization. We'll get into what exactly contextualization is, but if you know it, it's gonna help you with your essays, it's a requirement, uh, and it just really helps you understand the big picture of the time. So what the heck is contextualization? It is a big idea of what is going on before a time period. So if reconstruction is your topic, what is going on before reconstruction? The Civil War, that's your contextualization. I'd like you to think of it as the Star Wars scroll in the movies. If you've ever seen Star Wars, you're better than me because I've never seen one. But in the original Star Wars, it actually starts with this scroll that says a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. That's setting the stage for what the heck you were going to be watching. It gives background info for that. That's what contextualization is. When writing your essays, contextualization can and should go in the intro paragraph. And I want you to shoot for three to four sentences. And if you're stuck how to start, please remember the words. For example, you can use prior to reconstruction, there was a civil war, and then you'll explain the civil war in three to four sentences, and boom, you got your first point on the essay. Okay, so why were these dates, 1491 to 1607, chosen? Well, 1491 is one year prior to Columbus's voyage to the Americas. So this is what life was like for Native Americans prior to European contact. And Native Americans were isolated from Europe prior to Columbus. In 1607, England founded Jamestown, the first permanent English settlement in the New World. And most of this unit will focus on Native American life prior to Columbus as well as Spanish colonization of the Americas. And just a reminder, this PowerPoint is kind of an overview of the unit. We're going to get into specifics of everything you'll see in here in future videos. This is just a brief overview of what you're going to get into in this unit. So Native Americans before 1492, they were a group of diverse societies that adapted to their environments whether it was the Southwest by growing maize or corn or the Great Plains by hunting bison or the Northeast by having uh, some agriculture and hunting. So you have hunting in the Great Plains, farming and maize or corn as, as it is also known as, and irrigation systems to grow corn and maize and other crops and develop permanent settlements. Climbing exchange is a super important topic you should know. Again, we'll get into this in a future video, but this is the exchange of goods, ideas, people, crops, and diseases between the Americas, Europe, and Africa. And this forever changed the life and society in the three continents. None of them will be the same after Columbus comes to America and interaction between the three areas begins. So what are the impacts of contact on Europe? Well, there's gonna be a population increase because of potatoes and maize from the Americas to Europe. That's gonna to lead to a lot more food, a surplus of food, which will lead to more population. We'll see the development of mercantilism, and that's the purpose of these, is to make money for the mother country. All right, impacts on Native Americans, impacts of contact on Native Americans. Population will decrease drastically as a result of diseases such as smallpox in particular. In certain areas, as much as 90% of Native Americans died due to contact with European diseases. 
We'll also see the enslavement of natives by the Spanish in something known as the encomienda system, which we'll talk about in a future video. An impact on co impact of contact on Africans. We have the development of the Atlantic slave trade, which was started by Spain and Portugal. The Middle Passage was the forced migration of Africans to the Americans to the Americas in which about 20% of these enslaved Africans died on this forced migration to the Americas. Chattel slavery will develop in the Americas. And this is a system in which enslaved individuals could be bought and sold at will, and children would be enslaved as well. So this, this is perpetual slavery for individuals. Differing worldviews between natives and Europeans. Each group had different worldviews in regards to religion, gender roles, and land use. And this will be discussed in a lot more detail in topic 1.6. This will help lead to conflict between colonists and Native Americans. So to end this video, I want to give you some part two document questions to answer, to think about. Looking at this document this population collapse in Mexico. I want you to think of what were reasons for the drastic decline of Native American populations in Mexico and what does the cross in the left side of the painting suggest about motives for exploration at least as it as it deals with the Spanish. All right guys I look forward to seeing you back here for video number two. This will cover objective B topic 1.2. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Best of luck on your exam and have a good day.